Redemption. The Klingons descend into civil war as Worf decides it is time to regain his honor. We begin with the Enterprise heading to the Klingon homeworld, where Picard will participate in the appointing of Gowron to the High Council. And I was excited right away that we would be getting another Klingon story. Gowron was announced to be the new leader in the episode Reunion. Worf is practicing with his batleth, and Picard asks him if it's finally time to let the truth be known about his dishonor. They're hailed by Gowron's ship, the Bortas, and he says they must hurry to prevent a civil war. Even though Duras is dead, his family still has influence, and his two sisters are now doing everything from behind the scenes. Gowron wants Picard to ensure that his installation to the council is not interfered with, but Picard says he will not act outside of what Klingon law allows for his position as arbiter. And he also tells Data to start monitoring Romulan activity just in case. Worf admits to Gowron that Duras was the one working with the Romulans, and he asks for Gowron's help with clearing his name. To which he says no. I must have the Council's support to survive. I cannot expose their treachery. I expected Gowron to agree to help Worf, because it sounds like what Worf is telling him would help him against Duras' family, but he's basically giving Worf the same response that Picard gave Gowron. So Worf is blowing off some steam, and Guinan decides to join him. They discuss Worf's son, and his difficulty adjusting to human life, and what it means to be a Klingon, which spurs Worf into taking action. He asks Picard for a leave of absence to go restore his name. Mr. Worf, request granted. He meets with his brother Kern, from Sins of the Father, who says Gowron won't be alive much longer. He stands alone, surrounded by his enemies. Lurs and Beta would have him killed, and if they don't, I will. But Worf pulls the older brother card, and says they will help Gowron when he is most in need, and in return he will restore their family honor. As Arbiter, Picard announces Gowron as the new leader of the council. But Duras' sisters interrupt, bringing out Duras' son Taral to claim the right to the position. What did you think about the Duras sisters? I was honestly a little bit disappointed that they didn't have stronger personalities. Really? I thought they had strong personalities. I don't disagree, but I wish they were a little bit stronger. I was comparing this episode to the earlier Klingon episodes, where all the characters stood out a little bit more. I disagree. I thought they stood out very much. I thought they blended together a little bit too much. The fact that there's two of them, and they're basically the same. Hmm. I disagree. The one did remind me a lot of Joanna Lumley as Aunt Spiker in James and the Giant Peach. Oh, Sponge, you're such a tease. There's something special waiting for you in the oven. This is not a threat, Captain. Just an unfortunate truth. Later, they're discussing their plans with Romulans, including a mysterious figure in the shadows. Back on the Enterprise, Worf asks Data for all the information on the Kittimer Massacre. But Picard interrupts and says Worf is using his position as a Starfleet officer to influence the politics of the Klingons, which he is not okay with. But then realizes he's been doing pretty much the same thing for about four seasons. <laughs> So to even the playing field, he makes the records available to everyone. Picard is then called down to the planet to meet with the Duras sisters. And they point out that Picard is alone and unarmed, and I like how the one runs her hand over Picard's head. That was my favorite part of the episode. And he's not an idiot, so he knows... If I find Toddle's challenge valid, the two of you will very quickly gain control of the Council. If I reject Toral's claim... You will accuse me of serving Federation interest, and it will serve as a rallying cry to declare war. And I really liked that conversation between them, and how straightforward he was about everything. I agree. The next day, Picard announces Toral's bloodline is true, but he has not earned any honor for himself, so Gowron will lead the council. But some choose to back Toral anyway. Later on Gowron's ship, Worf offers to help in return for the restoration of his honor, but Gowron says he will only agree if Worf gets Starfleet to help. And in the middle of the conversation, they are suddenly attacked. And Picard orders the Enterprise to leave so as to avoid involving Starfleet in the conflict, even though Worf is still on the other ship. Worf uses his tactical knowledge, which helps a little bit, but it's not enough. And they end up being saved by Kern. And I thought it was a very well put together battle scene. Afterward, Picard returns to confirm Galron's appointment, and Galron restores Worf's honor just by saying that he is doing so. I would have thought it would take more than that. Earlier he was asking for proof of Worf's claims about the Duras family, and it seems like this would be a really good time to start spreading that actual information around, but they don't do that. And now that Gowron is officially the leader, 
He requests Federation assistance in accordance with their treaty, but Picard still says no, since it's an internal affair. He orders Worf to return to duty aboard the Enterprise, as a Starfleet officer cannot be involved, so Worf resigns. That was a good shot, too. I don't remember. It's probably the same as every other movie where a cop puts his badge on the table. Yes, it was. As he's prepping to leave, Picard goes to ask him if he's sure he's making the right decision. He tells him he appreciated having him on board the Enterprise, but understands his feelings. And I thought it was a good moment between them. I agree. And as he's leaving, the rest of the crew also shows their respect. And I couldn't help thinking that most of them probably barely knew Worf and were afraid to talk to him. I imagine, like in a big corporate structure, if you were just some peon and the COO or CEO was walking around, you wouldn't know them or talk to them. Yeah, it's all just show. Worf never really did anything. Because nobody would let him because they wouldn't listen to his good advice. Yeah, every time he said no response, he meant he didn't know how to use the console in front of him. <laughs> <laughs> They could have gotten out of every situation if they just put somebody competent back there. We finish with the Dura sisters discussing their plan with the Romulans, and the mysterious figure is revealed to be a Romulan Tasha. So Tasha must have secretly been a Romulan the whole time and faked her death at the hands of Armas. Maybe she and Armas are working together too. Maybe that's why she's in shadow all the time, because it's really Armas over her. Seeing Armas working with the Klingons and with the Romulans, <laughs> that's going to be so cool. <laughs> I hope he gets to pilot his own ship. Yeah, and he has some little mechanical spider walker thing to get around. Or he's in a tank. <laughs> Redemption. Overall? I was happy to get another Klingon episode, and we even get a two-parter this time. I liked the scale and complexity of the conflict, and the delicate positions of Picard and Worf in the middle of everything. I thought the way some of it was portrayed didn't quite match the scale of things. For example, Picard never seems to contact Starfleet about anything that's happening and just makes all the decisions himself, and our only sense of what's happening on the Klingon side comes from the small number of Klingons we see in the Great Hall and then other characters just kind of talking about it. The way the Klingons talk to Picard and Worf about the implications and effects of their actions was all based on cause and effect, but Picard and Worf only seem to look at things from an emotional angle. I get that they're personally affected by everything, but I wish they had discussed the practical effects of everything happening a little bit more. It would have been a perfect opportunity for the big meeting scenes that they like to have on the show, but I still thought it was a really good setup for everything. I didn't think it was as good as some of the earlier Klingon episodes, because again, I thought the side characters like Kalar and Duras were more interesting in those episodes and had stronger personalities than these characters, but it was still good. I gave it a B plus. I wasn't quite as invested with these characters as I was with the earlier episodes. I gave this one an A-. I thought the writing handled Worf's departure really well and gave it the time it deserved. It wasn't some half-assed thing where you knew he wasn't really leaving. The episodes focused on him have been really good, so I was happy they chose to use one as the season finale. I've also noticed that he's one of the main cast whose episodes don't always resolve nice and neat by the end, which has given his character more depth. I'm not sure why they don't do that with other characters, though I will say his arc has been the most soap opera-y out of everyone else. Rami Lintasha's reveal at the end was interesting. Imagine it has something to do with the fact that she stayed on the other Enterprise in yesterday's Enterprise, and smashing together alternate timelines seems par for the course in science fiction TV shows, so we'll see where that goes. I hope it's not some throwaway thing. I was disappointed that they didn't bring up the records that Worf was using as evidence, especially because Picard pointed out that it was borderline violating the Prime Directive. I would think the information would have had some sort of impact, especially after Picard made it public. The information would directly affect Duras' family, and could prevent this entire thing, I would think, potentially. Right. I am looking forward to part two, to see where it all ends up. Me too. <laughs>